I just escaped from the big city of Toronto to move on to 40 acres of Canadian wilderness. I am a big city human, but I've always had a dream to build an off-grid homestead with multiple cabins built from the timber on the land. You know, part of the dream is to get married, have 10 children or five, and raise an Irish wolfhound, my favorite dog. After my first few days here, I'm starting to realize that I may have made a huge mistake. It's super late in the season to be building in the wilderness. Winter is coming. This area of central Ontario, a province in Canada, is very unique. Thousand foot high ridge lines, deep valleys, rivers and waterfalls everywhere. Its climate is cold enough to keep away most humans and civilization, yet warm enough to have the hardwood tree species I love, like maple and oak, alongside the great pine and spruce trees. It is the highest black bear concentration of the whole province. There are gray wolves, mountain lions, lynx, wolverine, and tons of moose. There are even smatterings of white-tailed deer and wild turkey, where they are at the very northern limit of their ranges. My main skill in life so far has been speaking Mandarin Chinese. I was the host of a nationally broadcast talk show in China. I also was an actor in Chinese television series and feature films. And hosted events like the Backstreet Boys concert last year that was live streamed to 45 million people in China. I was forced to move back to Canada due to a recent political conflict. I was very sad to leave China at first, but this gave me an opportunity for my homesteading dream. My hypothesis is that homesteading, although less comfortable than the big city, will be more satisfying and healthy physically, mentally, and spiritually. I bought this 40 acres to test this hypothesis. I will live here at least one year. I had a good life in Toronto recently, working with brands back in China over the internet, but a good life is the mortal enemy of a great life. Here's to risking leaving a good life in the pursuit of a great one. In this episode, I will break camp, carve out the build site, and build the foundation for my first log cabin. There's no time to waste. If the ground freezes, digging my foundation will be impossible. And I may have to go back to Toronto in defeat. Let's get after it. This is gonna be so much work. I gotta cut about uh, 250 meters back to where there's a meadow, an open meadow at the middle of the property. And uh, it's pretty thick brush like this. This is so much better than working at a computer in Excel. I can tell you that. Problem number one, the chainsaw, I was cutting these small branches off of a tree and they're all at different angles. And the and the um, the chain just skipped right off the bar. And I put it back on, but there's something jammed in there. So I'm gonna, I don't have time. The sun is setting. I'm just gonna use my ax and then my saw that is um, in my backpack over there to try to bushwhack through the rest of this to get back to the the meadow that's at the center of the property.
Holy. Somebody's dog, like a lab with a collar, ran over. He was very friendly. And now he's yelping and something is chasing him in that direction. I should have my bears around me, man. That dog that came up, tearing through the woods back over there. The dog I heard went down over, down the bank towards the river. It found something and that thing chased it all the way back up here and it just took off. So there's, I had a bear come up to me on my tent the first night I slept on this property, scared the shit out of me. Up the river valley, there were wolves howling at dusk the first night I camped on this property. And then uh, neighbors have reported seeing wolverines and mountain lions. So we got the full Ontario, Canada quadfecta of predatory animals out here. This is the dog. Hey, buddy. Hey, he survived. He survived. Holy shit. Dude, I thought you were dead. I thought you were a goner. Where, where's your owner, buddy? Where's your owner? Huh? <laughs> where's your owner? I thought this dog was a goner. Honestly. The way, the way he was getting chased through the bush and just like... There was something right on his tail. I definitely need to pick up my Irish wolfhound ASAP. Who's, whose dog is this? Where is your home? You, you, you can't sleep here, buddy. It's a full house. Happy to be here, sitting in my meadow in the middle of my 40 acres. I can hear the river in the distance. Day one. The dog found his way underneath the corner of one of the, of the tent, and he's now curled up right at my head. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, no. You can't, you can't sleep here, dude. What are you doing? Whose dog is this? Whose dog is this? He's getting in my fucking sleeping bag. What are you doing? Jesus, how am I going to sleep? So poor buddy here is, uh, oh, he's shivering. Where? What is this dog doing? Oh my God. Dude, this guy is getting crazy. Maybe I don't need to buy a dog. Maybe I just... Whoops. Day two begins. So we've got a little, little dusting of snow here. This is why it's uh, it's a race against time because once it gets really cold and um, the ground starts to freeze, the frost sets in, then it's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to be digging. Um, if I need to do any digging, which I probably will for the foundation. So once I get the digging done for the foundation and the foundation is in, whatever that foundation may be, then... My hypothesis is, is that no matter how cold or snowy it gets, uh, Mother Nature will not be able to stop the process um, of the wild homestead build. So. Titanium, ultralight stove, large.
there was a lot of condensation building up on the inside of the tent last night. So I'm going to put up this tent liner. Base camp. Voila. Look at that ridge line. 500 foot ridge line, river at the base on this property. Mm. Oh my good Lord. Toasted. This thing is kicking so much heat. I am boiling. This is like steaming. I'm going to have to open up the tent. This is how hot this thing is. Wolf milk. Romulus Remus, raised by the mother she-wolf. This is how Rome was built. This is how we will build the wild homestead. Next step, you see this blue flagging tape. You know, you can see the next one on, but this whole path in here, this is about maybe 300 meters. I guess that's like three football fields out to where the little pad where I'm parking my car. And it's an absolute clusterfuck. I need to chainsaw and clear this out so that I can easily get my jet sled, which is the sled that I pull stuff in on, um, so I can get material, any material I need from the road back here. And then also I'm getting lost all the time. Like in the middle of the night, I'm getting lost in the woods and I can't find my way back. So I got to take the time now to chainsaw the heck out of this. And uh, of course, I need to dig the, the build site. That's critical, but I think this is step number one.
Ground. This is my first time making cowboy coffee. Just put the grounds right at the top. So um, we'll see how it goes. So we switched to uh, more brutalist, less elegant methods to boil the coffee. It just wasn't boiling very fast on here. You know, you think uh, sometimes with social media, like, oh, it'd be much cooler if it's, you know, you're boiling it on top of the, the hot stove. It's just not, not quite hot enough for whatever reason, but hey man, I find out here, sometimes you, you gotta do what's practical, not necessarily what's gonna look best for the interwebs and, and YouTube. So here we go. Well, that was an absolute fucking disaster. The things are boiling out of the top, out of the hole, coming out of all orifices. Put out the flame, the gas was still going, had to turn it off so the fricking fire didn't explode this. Jesus Lord. Mm. <laughs> it's not bad. It's pretty weak. I don't think I put in enough, enough grounds. Yeah, what's the ratio of grounds to water on cowboy coffee? Please let me know. Mm. Still, good enough. Better than a cold slap in the face. The trail is completed, as you can see. Um, that took a hell of a lot of muscle power to do that chainsawing, hacking, sawing. The next step, now that I've got a clear shot back here, is to choose my cabin location. I wanna be looking onto that bluff. Over there is the river. Beyond those trees, it drops down and kind of a big ledge. So I wanna get close to the ledge and then if I take out even two trees there, I should have an amazing view, maybe of the river, definitely of the bluff. So this is, I think, is the build spot just at the base of this meadow here, looking that way up on the, on the cliff side. I think where I'm gonna build the main cabin, the main house is down at the end of this peninsula here, I'm gonna show you the view. You can see this, it pops out right here, and voila, here's the river. The river itself. It flows down, you can see the rapids over there, and then the river bends around, and it flows up that way. 
if I knock out those spruce trees right there, I should have the view up the river as well, which I think will be very glorious. So this is gonna be one hell of a view and it's gonna be from up here. This is gonna be the key build site for the main home, but I don't have enough time to do that this year. Let the site clearance begin. Look at these bad boys. Can you see these? Jesus, man. I think these are hawthorn bushes. This would absolutely take your eye out if you walk straight into that. Maybe I can lay these as like booby traps on the property to take out trespassers if there are any. First time getting my uh, chainsaw, uh, what is this called? Chain back on the bar. Let's see if I did it right. I just had a bit of an, uh, an epiphany. So you see this box here. This is not 12 by 12. This is 16 wide and 12 deep. Because I'm looking at it, I'm like, if I'm doing 12 by 12, why not just do 12 by 16? Dick Prenicky, the, the classic Dick Prenicky cabin was 12 by 16. Also Kyle, Kyle's cabin, famous YouTuber from Minnesota who I followed for a long time. His Wilderness Cabin was also 12 by 16. 12 by 16 gives you a little bit more room. And if I want to attract a beautiful lady to live with me before I construct my larger abode for our family, it'd be a lot easier convincing a beautiful lady to come onto my homestead if it's 12 by 16 rather than 12 by 12. Am I not correct? So it's gonna make it more difficult, gotta peel more logs, but I feel like this could be actually really good. 12 by 16. Now I'm going to measure the diagonals, the two diagonals, and if they're equal, it means it's square. So here we go, moment of truth. Not good. One diagonal is 633, the other one's 595. What a flipping miracle. It's square. 605 centimeters by 605 centimeters. That's six meters and five centimeters. Perfectly square. Look at the view back there between those two trees to the ridge line. And orienting it the long way this way, 16 feet and then 12 feet deep, I can have the door, I think on this side, big window looking up the meadow, and then big window, of course, looking over the ridge line and the river that way. So that's pretty epic. Check this thing out. Doesn't this look like a medieval, medieval weapon? I could see this being used like in the, in the Hundred Years War between England and France or something. Very sharp blade. It's for basically hacking out these small bushes and reeds and small, I guess, small trees. You can't cut with a chainsaw because it'll It'll tip the chainsaw chain off the blade. I've been figuring out that firsthand. So this is a, it's a brunt force tool and you gotta, it's not perfect. You gotta whack a lot of times and hard, but it's the most effective tool. One of my neighbors gave this to me. I feel like I'm ready to bash some skulls in 
in the medieval times or clear my sight. I cannot tell you, um, I don't feel 100% calm because I got to get the foundation dug and the gravel in and, and the uh, stones in. Once that's in, I just know no matter what, I'm going to be able to finish this as long as I don't get injured um, before the real big snows come. So that's huge. So the real, you know, the moment of truth is tomorrow is, is, is the soil frozen or not. Well, I was not expecting that. Look at this. How the hell am I supposed to dig in dirt? How am I supposed to clear the site? Moment of truth. Is the ground frozen or not? Hooey! Hot damn Vietnam! Excellent news, ladies and gentlemen. The ground is not frozen. Holy Lord. The other thing is you can see that kind of lighter colored dirt there. I'm going down about, I don't know how big this blade is, maybe 10 inches or 12 inches, and only about five or six inches down, I'm hitting into sand. That's sand, that's kind of like the mineral soil that I'm looking for. So I need to even out this entire spot here, um, but I don't even need to dig down very deep. I don't need to dig down very deep at all to get to that sand, that mineral soil. So. It's gonna be possible. We gotta get this dug though as soon as humanly possible because I have no idea when this is gonna freeze up. So I'm just gonna be digging like mad. I know, I'm gonna have to sharpen that. My neighbor bringing in, helping me bring in these concrete pier pads. You know, it's almost 400 meters back to the build site. So thank God for that. Right. So this is perfect for packing underneath your foundation stones. Because with this mixture of sand and the, and the rock, it drains well, but it also is really good at packing. Going forward, once you have your roof and you're in there and you're like, I'm kind of tired of an earthen floor, <laughs> you can any at any point put in a, a wooden floor system of some sort. Right. I'm gonna measure down to hit gravel from your line. Here, four inches of gravel starts your base height, which will be about six and a quarter inches on your measuring tape. You then want to match that here at six and a quarter inches is basically where you're going to want to have your gravel up, which I was thinking it was going to be close to the height of your level ground here, which is fine. Nice. I'm happy with that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Go. <laughs> Long johns were wet, and I'm like, yeah. oh, no. It's down multiple layers. I oh, don't know. It worked well. My, my uh, 500 pound ex girlfriend <laughs> would have been perfect. You just put her on vibrate mode. Yeah. Oh no, it's not what the fight talking about. We'll go. Yeah. You're solid now, buddy. 
Dude, first Solid stone. Now. First stone, my friend. Stone. Thank you. First Thank you, many. sir. Yes. Many stones. <laughs> my longest girlfriend in China was with a Russian girl. And, um, okay. Yeah, just like I would never marry her because she's just like, oh. $20 million, man. Yeah. Is that not correct? Test firing the shotgun. Haven't fired this puppy in more than a year. So just making sure that it works. Hopefully she's gonna fit. My God, take down that guy. First, clear the site. Look at that. What an upgrade. Look at the height difference. What an absolute beast. What an absolute beast of a tent. And look at that view. Ooh oh, praise the gods. Beautiful. Now I just need to wait a few days to get the hot stove for this thing. But being able to get up on a cot inside here, off the ground, Oh my God, because in that thing, when it was getting wet or snow filled, the two ends were touching down, one on my head, one on the foot of my sleeping bag, and the sleeping bag, the top and the bottom were getting soaked. And then not only was I get co co getting cold because, you know, the feathers in the down inside of a sleeping bag, once they get wet, they get compacted and all those little air pockets disappear and its insulative properties go to zero. So thank God, because that thing, I'm 6'3", that thing's just not big enough. It's just not freaking big enough. So can't wait to get the stove in this. Hell yeah, man. I'll be able to rest better, recuperate better, and just work harder. Damn. First morning, waking up in the uh, new tent. No hot stove, but oh my God, sleeping on a cot. Cannot tell you what an amazing difference sleeping on a cot. Oh my God. All the room. check if this is still that's 11 inches so we're good to put a block there 237 237 inches yeah. 243. so it's not far off yeah what did i say 230... 237 and 243 so we... i'm just trying to think of how shift both of these to the left uh, 240. oh ho, ho, ho. Two, 240 was the midpoint last time the sun Oh, shit. Will line us on 240. No way. Wait, wait. Woo! Hip to be square, baby. Square square. Huey Lewis in the news. Because there's a lot of dude, city girls who are like, sweet. I won't crush you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, 
the pool is actually, because what you have here is, is quite a big asset. Because, dude, nobody can afford a home in the city. In Toronto, dude? I don't blame The ladies. average home it's is fucking mil $1.1 million. $1.1 million average. Just hated it. Yeah. I was like, Dad, but didn't you know the ancient Egyptians? <laughs> just set that reach around. Tree build up naturally in the fish because of, uh, because of what it is. Look at that, man. Four pads in, four pads on concrete. My buddy coming over, helping me with the, um, to do the leveling because it's the first time I've done it. Make sure that I'm doing it right, doing it together. And uh, that was a huge help. Also using his ATV to pull all this material back here. The, uh, the concrete pier pads and the gravel saved me so much time. And uh, now we're gonna do um, another one in the middle of each span, another concrete pier pad with gravel so it might take a day or two to get more gravel lined up uh but i'm feeling pretty damn good i can actually see that this thing is coming together i gotta excavate all the rest of the dirt in the middle bring it down to the mineral soil which is the sand and um then this site's prepped baby We're looking for 11 and a quarter inches from the top of this to the top of the rock pile. So we've got about two more inches of this to go. Shit. Don't want to stab myself in my baby making machine. after dark and I just want to go to bed but I got this stove super late today and it's been a son of a bitch setting this thing up it does not fit together very well at all but you know what I'm determined before I go to sleep that I go to sleep in a warm hot tent and you can't just burn this thing inside of your tent for the first try 
because the paint and some of the other, you know, finishing touches on the stove and the stove pipe needs to be burnt off. We need to do one cycle of fire through the stove. So I think it's about seven o'clock and uh, I'm going to cycle one fire through here and then try to get it into my tent tonight. Whoa, look at that glass. Look at the glass. Jesus. Ah, baby. <laughs> we got a hot tent. We got a hot tent, baby. Living large, man. Lifestyles of the rich and famous. Woke up absolutely freezing because um, I just had like my thin wool blanket on because it was so warm in here. And it's about uh, 1 30. The fire was completely off. So I'm going to have to learn how to keep this thing stoked properly, fueled properly, have the damper on properly. Um, so I relit it, starting to warm up in here. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's 6 a.m. We're going into town, the nearest town, to Home Depot. The, f the uh, stove is leaking. The pipe where it connects to the stove, that pipe section is indented slightly. And the smoke almost imperceptibly was uh, coming out. I woke up, like, not quite choking, but this very bad smell in my nose. And I realized the whole tent was full of smoke. So I got to go get some kind of high heat resistant silicone. Then one of the um, chimney sections is actually broken. So I got to get an additional one just in case I need that extra three feet of height uh, to the chimney top. But this is what it looks like at uh, 6 a.m. in the forest. Water and pipe. Oh shit. <clears throat> Here we go, final stone. The board between the other two um, pads is flat. And this bad boy, level, shblevel. The foundation is now done and stage two can commence. Ah! I can't tell you the roller coaster of emotions this has been. Thinking, what the hell have I done? I quit my job. I moved here in basically the start of winter, the worst possible time you could. What the hell am I doing? <sighs> and now that I see this, this foundation behind, um, I'm like, th this is happening. We're rolling, baby. Just got to keep going. Keep a positive uh, mindset. Roll with the punches and uh we're gonna make it the snows are gonna start to come though soon and uh that's gonna make things very interesting indeed see you next week on wild homestead <laughs>